So in the previous video, we were talking about the gene control in prokaryotes, and we saw how the bacteria have this particular section of DNA called the operon, as an example, the LAC operon, where the genes in the LAC operon, LAC Z, LAC Y, and LAC A, can be turned on and turned off depending on the situation. For this video, which is the last video of chapter 16, by the way, we are going to be looking at the control of gene expression in eukaryotes. Now, as I've mentioned before, control of gene expression is a highly complicated topic, all right? And compared to prokaryotes, eukaryotes are significantly more complex. They are, we are significantly more complicated. That's what makes us different from bacteria aside from other things. So I'm going to show you a promoter and a gene in a eukaryote, for example, animal cells or plant cells. And I'm going to show you the RNA polymerase. Right off the bat, you will notice that the RNA polymerase does not have a place to attach to. There is a promoter there, but the RNA polymerase is unable to attach to the promoter because it needs a binding site. So in eukaryotes, usually what happens is there needs to be the assistance of a protein known as a transcription factor. A transcription factor is any molecule, usually a protein, that affects gene expression. As you can see here, the transcription factor will be able to attach to the promoter. And when it's attached to the promoter, the RNA polymerase can then attach to the transcription factor, move along the promoter and the gene, and therefore the gene is expressed to produce the mRNA and eventually to be translated into the protein. So eukaryotes are a little bit more complicated in the sense that it needs the assistance of these things known as transcription factors. Now, don't have to go into the detail of this, but we are going to look at one example of gene expression in eukaryotes, and that is pertaining to the seed germination. Now, in chapter 15, we talked about seed germination. We were discussing how gibberellins, a particular type of hormone, affects the seed germination. Just as a little bit of revision, when water enters the seed, what's supposed to happen? Um, it activates the embryo. The embryo releases gibberellin, which I've represented in the letter G. Gibberellins diffuse to the aluron layer, the pinkish layer, and the aluron layer synthesizes amylase. And the amylase is the one that, if you remember, breaks down the starch into maltose and eventually glucose, and that's used up by the embryo. That's a revision for chapter 15, by the way. I'm going to put that up on the top right corner if you want to have a revision on it. Now, what we're going to see for this particular video is how gibberellins affect gene expression because the aluron layer is a plant cell and within the aluron layer it has its own nucleus i'm just drawing that out and as you can see here in the chromosome within the aluron layer cell they have a gene for amylase production where when this gene gets expressed it helps the aluron layer synthesize amylase and of course Next to the gene, there is a promoter. What's normally supposed to happen is the RNA polymerase has to bind to the promoter or attach to the promoter and express the amylase gene. So when it expresses the amylase gene, the aluron layer can synthesize amylase. But something rather odd happens here. The odd thing is the transcription factor, if you notice that, is it attached to the promoter? No, it's not. It's not attached to the promoter. The reason why it's not attached to the promoter is because there is a protein blocking it. Now, the name of the transcription factor is called PIF. You don't have to remember the full name. It's just called PIF. If a question asks you what's the name of the transcription factor, it's called PIF. The name of the protein that is blocking the PIF is known as Della protein. You do need to know the name of Della protein, by the way. Now, to keep things simple, I'm just going to say that the Della protein has a receptor attached to it. Right now, I'm going to ask you a question. Is the amylase gene turned off or turned on? In this case, it is turned off. So the gene cannot be expressed. So the aluron layer cannot synthesize amylase. Fine. But what usually happens here is as follows. Remember, we are going to combine the knowledge from chapter 15 and chapter 16 now. 
Water enters the seed and activates the embryo. Embryo releases gibberellins. Gibberellins will diffuse into the alluron layer, if you remember that. Okay. Now, the alluron layer, we know that it synthesizes amylase. We know that. But we want to know how exactly does that happen. So in reality, what happens is the gibberellins will diffuse to the alluron layer and attach to a receptor, as you can see over there. I'm just showing you the arrow here where the gibberellins is attaching to a receptor. Now, when it attaches to the receptor, what happens then is it causes the destruction of Della proteins. Um, in reality, what happens is the gibberellins attach to a receptor and it activates an enzyme. That enzyme causes the destruction of Della protein, but I'm just cutting it short. All you have to know is the gibberellins bind to a receptor which causes the destruction of the Della protein. So when the Della proteins get destroyed, what happens then? The PIF, which is the transcription factor, it will attach to the promoter. And when the PIF attaches to the promoter, what happens then? Can the RNA polymerase attach to the PIF? Yes, it can. Can it move along the gene? Yes, it can. Does it express the gene for amylase production? Yes, it does. So when the gene is turned on, gene expression happens and that's what causes the alluron layer to synthesize amylase. This is the only example of gene expression in eukaryotes that you have to know in the exam. Okay, so if a question asks you, how does seed germination happen? For usually it's about four months or five months. If they just say how seed germination happens, you just say water enters the seed, activates the embryo, embryo releases gibberellins, diffuse to the alluron layer, alluron layer synthesizes amylase, amylase breaks down starch into maltose and into glucose, and then the glucose is absorbed by the embryo and is used to produce ATP. But if the question specifically says how does gibberellins affect seed germination, then you have to say the gibberellins diffuse to the alluron layer, which attaches to a receptor, which causes the destruction of the Della protein, which allows the PIF or transcription factor to attach to the promoter, and the gene for amylase production is turned on. It really depends on how the question is asked. If the question is asking you about a general seed germination question, then just go with this answer. But if the question specifically says, what does gibberellin do in seed germination? Then you have to mention the whole thing about the receptor, destroying the Della protein, allowing the promoter transcription factor to attach to the promoter, and allowing the gene for amylase production to be expressed or turned on. So be careful with how the question is asked in the exam. With that being said, Chapter 16 is officially done.